going to be a little break here to do a bunch of live demonstrations to try to make it a little more interesting. I thought about going out there and getting some rotten vegetables in this interview, so those are all the best tonight. <laughs> but maybe if you have some scrap paper there, you can do that. But hopefully all will go well. Um, so I'm presenting on Symbiota. So this is a software platform that's used to establish biodiversity um, data portals. Um, and these portals are aggregates of multiple collections in most cases. So there's a um, so basically, Symbiota is, is the software for doing biodiversity portals are for creating um, virtual floors or virtual ponds. Uh, there's three different modules or features available. One is the specimen module, and it allows you to search specimens, manage specimens. Then there's a biodiversity informatics module, or biodiversity inventory module, for doing species lists of, of certain areas. Uh, flores, faunas, bioblitz, along those lines. And then there's an identification key module, interactive identification key module. All of these can actually be installed um, separately, turned on or off. However, they work best when they're all turned on and working with each other. Through this uh, presentation, I'll show you some most of these features. So. Um, then there's a uh, there's um, taxonomic information, images, distribution maps, descriptions, and that's all support information for, for the other, other modules. And down at the bottom, it's a CMS, meaning all the data in there can actually be managed through the web interface if you have the right permissions in your login. So Symbiota is the software that's behind there. It's a framework software, so it's kind of similar along the lines of like a Google site or a wiki, where you install the software and then you, you populate the database and load the information in there and then manage the data through the, uh, through the interface. It's an open source project, like Specify, uh, meaning the code's out there and anyone's willing, able to actually download the code, modify it, and even contribute to the project. Now, each of these portals are made up of distinct data sets. So this is actually Signet, which is a Southwest plant portal, vascular plants mostly. Um, North American lichen, uh, North American bryophytes. This is a taxonomic specific portal. So each of these portals have a taxonomic and geographic scope. Um, so this is Mercasia is of Americas. Um, and this is actually, so it's a floor portal of the um, Skyline region in the Southwest. Now this portal is actually um, the same data set as the Signet portal, the first portal I showed you. And that's the case with this too, the Intermount portal. So there's three different faces that connect to the same database. One nice thing about that is if Someone from either of those portals submits a field image to, or a species description, or manage the taxonomic trees, it is available, that change is available to all those portals immediately. So you're not developing these independent data sets. Now, there's one thing that I get is, you know, why are you, why are you reinventing the wheel? There's a lot of other people that are doing this. You're, you know, why are you competing with this group or this other group. Um, and it's true, there are a lot of um, different information portals that are popping up. However, I like to think of it more in the lines of, you know, it's not duplication, but it's niche overlap. You know, we all have our different focus and different ways of doing things. And <coughs> even though we compete in certain aspects, there's, um, there is, we do have our specific niches. And, and the thing is, it, it kind of generates a diversity of thought. So if there's just one product that did everything, there's not a friendly competition going on there that kind of spurs the person to, oh, I gotta get that going, there's blah, 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 something like that, or, or it's like, oh, they did that, that's really neat, that would work actually well in my model, but I did it in a slightly different way so I can even take a little bit further. So, Having that friendly 
the competition there actually spurs on development quite well, I believe. So one way that Symbiote is different than, than Specify and, and um, EOL is, is uh, one aspect is, is their community portal. So it's a consortium of multiple collections. It's just not one collection. Um, there is, it's specimen based, so where EOL is more of a taxon based aggregator of information. And then the, um, it's a content management system where all the data is, can be managed directly within the portal by the users. So there's multiple data sets typically in a portal owned by multiple folks that all manage their data through the, through the web interface. So it's specimen based and it's an it's a aggregate of specimens. So there's multiple collections. And you know, I don't have to preach, you know, preach to the choir, everyone here knows the value of specimens. So here's three um, three of the uh, TCN portals that actually use specify. So there's also scan, which was talked about yesterday. But there's a uh, lichen. Consortium, the Bryophyte Consortium, and then Micro Portal. And they're all made of, of several dozen collections. So it's a collaboration of multiple, multiple collections. And right now I'm going to actually give you a demonstration of, of the power of using multiple collections behind a data portal. Okay, so I'm going to go to Signet, so that's clients, vascular clients of the Southwest, and I'm going to click on a uh, link that's called Dynamic Key. It opens up a typical Google map interface, and we're going to zoom in. Let's say I was out hiking one day down in uh, Whetstones. And this is a place where there's been no formal inventory done, but there's a lot of collections in that area. So I click on there, and you notice up in the upper left there, there's the coordinates are captured of where I click. Now I submit it. Now what it's doing is actually querying the consortium database, and it's sampling out concentric rings. So in this case, it sampled out 20 miles. So this portal set up to do five mile increments. So it did 20 miles and is able to compile a species list of 11,065 taxa based on actual herbarium specimens. Well, from there I could say, okay, well, the plant I'm interested in, I'm trying to agree with a tree. So now we're down to 56 possibilities. And then it had compound leaves. Now we're down to 16. And let's say it's opposite. Well, now we're down to five possibilities. Now, I took a resource that's complete for the state, and it's actually managed by the experts. So it's an authoritative research. And now all I had to do was know how to do was actually navigate a map, click on the dot where I was hiking. And then I, I had to know what a tree was. Uh, opposite leaf arrangement and a compound leaf. Now with that minimal knowledge, I could actually get it down to five possibilities. And at this point, you could actually just click on the species and look at images or descriptions, and then narrow down your, your identification from that. So now it's a resource that's, that's an expert resource that's available to the common user and the novice to actually explore the biodiversity within their region. So that's the main purpose of these data portals. And here's the, uh, just in case it didn't work, I have that up, so. Screen captures. <laughs> So, so there is, um, I mentioned before, it's a content management system, so all the data can be edited in there. So what I showed you in the demonstration, that was a read-only read interface, and it's available to anyone whether they're logged in or not. However, if you do log in and you have the correct permission,
permissions, there's a password protected interface that allows you to actually manage data through the browser. The nice thing about doing it through the browser is there's no special software installation, there's no special updates. Outside of your browser updates, you don't have to worry about it's platform independent, so it will work on just about any system, and it's available anywhere where there's web access. You know, downside is what you need web access, but. So, demonstration two, I'm just going to walk you through a, a specimen search. And there, let's go to. This is the Lichen portal, Lichen's in North America, so it's one of the TCNs. And we'll go search, and we'll search all the collections. So that's all the, all the collections that are in here, we can search one or multiple ones. Generally it's nice just to search all, and we're going to do at cross. Yeah. 